Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chadzam. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 24th of November. Indian Prime Minister Modi discusses COVID-19 situation vaccine distribution with chief ministers. President Ghani says Afghanistan wants connectivity, not charity, at International Donor Conference. And India releases 24 Pakistani nationals arrested for crossing border illegally. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday held a virtual meet with chief ministers of states to review the country's coronavirus situation and vaccine distribution strategy. He urged states to send details on how they plan to take the vaccine to lowest levels so that the distribution plan can be chalked out with collective coordination. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday interacted with Chief Ministers of State via video conferencing to review the COVID-19 situation amid a surge in infections in the country, along with vaccine distribution plan. The Prime Minister assured the states that the vaccine against COVID-19, which India will get for its citizens, will be safe on all scientific standards. He said vaccine distribution strategy will be talked out in collective coordination and states should soon send details on how they plan to take the vaccine to lowest levels. This comes as the centre is betting on the five vaccine candidates that are currently undergoing advanced stages of clinical trials in India. हमारे लिए जितनी जरूरी है स्पीड है उतनी ही जरूरी है सेफ्टी भी है भारत जो भी वैक्सीन अपने नागरिकों को देगा वो हर वैज्ञानिक कसौटी पर खड़ी होगी जहां तक वैक्सीन के डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की बात है तो उसकी तैयारी भी आप सभी राज्यों के साथ मिलकर के की जा सके सके रही है The meeting came as India's COVID-19 caseload on Tuesday surged past 9.17 million with over 134,000 deaths. The Prime Minister said while India is in a better situation than other countries, it still needs to bring the positivity rate below 5% and there should be no laxity in the fight against the virus. As cyclonic storm Nivar is likely to cross southern parts of India on November 25, Rain lashed out in parts of Tamil Nadu state on Tuesday. The India Meteorological Department has issued a red alert for Tamil Nadu and Puducherry, while a yellow alert has been issued for coastal Andhra Pradesh and Telangana states. With Cyclone Nivar expected to make landfall along India's Tamil Nadu coast and Puducherry coast on November 25th, rain lashed parts of the southern Tamil Nadu state on Tuesday. The India Meteorological Department or IMD has issued a red alert for Tamil Nadu and Puducherry while a yellow alert has been issued for coastal Andhra Pradesh and Telangana states where heavy rainfall is expected at isolated places. Actually this is crossing tomorrow evening around 5 pm. So the severe weather will be start by tomorrow forenoon. So if you see in terms of the rain Uh, uh, south of the Pondicherry, north of the Pondicherry, all will have a rain of 20 to 35 centimeters. Meanwhile, in an effort to provide any needed assistance during the cyclonic storm's landfall, 30 NDRF teams have been deployed across Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Puducherry. Cyclone Nivar will be the second severe cyclone of the year in Bay of Bengal, following Cyclone Amphan in May. This is the second cyclone to cross Tamil Nadu of the cyclone Gaja which hit the state in 2018. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Monday said his country wants connectivity, not charity as he underscored the need for strong regional consensus for creating sustainable peace in Afghanistan while addressing a site event of the Geneva conference virtually. 
Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Monday said his country wants connectivity, not charity, as he addressed a side event of the Geneva Conference virtually. Ghani stressed that a strong regional consensus is essential to creating sustainable peace in Afghanistan. After having reached an agreed-upon end state for a political settlement, he also emphasized that the violence the Afghans suffer is beyond endurance. Utilize existing forums for building consensus on creating predictable environments for regional cooperation on trade, transit and investment, thereby enabling the Afghan people to lift ourselves through participation in functioning in reliable supply chains and value chains. We don't want charity. We want connectivity. Meanwhile, participants of the 2020 Geneva Conference on Afghanistan said that ongoing peace efforts with Taliban in Doha should lead to a reduction in violence in the country and reaching a ceasefire is urgent. Afghan Foreign Minister Mohammad Hanif Atmar said that without a peace deal, the Afghan government has released hundreds of Taliban prisoners, but violence is still high. Chinese ambassador to Nepal Hao Yangki has yet again expedited meetings with top leaders of ruling Nepal Communist Party as tensions escalate in the party over underlying differences between two factions. Ambassador Hao, after meeting with Prime Minister and co-chair of NCP KP Sharma Oli on November 17, has now met with his co-chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal. Amid increasing rifts in ruling NCP, Nepal Communist Party, Chinese ambassador to Nepal, Hao Yanki, held a meeting with executive chairman of the NCP, Pushp Kamal Dahel, on Monday. The meeting comes at a time when an intra-party rift within the ruling NCP is at its peak due to factional feuds between the two rival factions, one led by Dahel and the other led by Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. The latest meeting has courted controversy. However, the health press advisor Bishnu Sapkota said that there was no discussion on the party's internal dispute during the meeting. This is not the first time that the Chinese ambassador has expressed deep interest in the internal dynamics of the ruling party. Earlier in May, Envoy Yankee had intensified political meetings with the top guns of the ruling party as the NCP was on the verge of a split. The active engagement of a diplomat in Nepal's internal political affairs has raised many questions. The latest meeting also comes ahead of the Chinese Defence Minister Wei Feng's visit to the Himalayan nation next week. Moving on, as Pakistan continues to record rise in COVID-19 cases, government has imposed lockdown in parts of the country yet again. Government in Sindh has allotted time for opening markets and business centres, while well, authorities in Karachi has enforced smart lockdown in hotspots. Pakistan is currently facing second wave of the deadly virus, which has infected 379,883 people so far. As Pakistan continues to reel under the impact of COVID-19, authorities in parts of the country are edging towards lockdown yet again. The country facing a second wave of the deadly virus on Tuesday reported 379,883 confirmed coronavirus cases with over 7,700 deaths so far. Government in Sindh province taking drastic measures has ordered markets and business centres to be open only from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays and remain closed on weekends. This comes as city administration has already enforced smart and micro-smart lockdowns in several emerging hotspots across the country's largest city of Karachi over the weekend for 14 days to deal with the rising virus cases. These things are very many things that are not in our eyes. They are going to suffer today. The government has been doing it and the government should think about what they are doing. Meanwhile, locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir also expressed concern over the ongoing 15-day lockdown amid rising virus cases in the illegally occupied region. They said they had suffered a lot earlier and are losing their already affected businesses. <laughs> Pakistan-administered Kashmir has so far recorded 6,203 coronavirus cases alone. More on news from Pakistan. 
Officials and well-wishers gathered at Islamabad Zoo on Monday for a farewell party of a Pakistan's lonely elephant, Kavan, before he sets off for a new life in Cambodia this week. After years of campaigning by animal rights advocates, Kavan is finally set to be airlifted to an elephant sanctuary on November 29. Officials and well-wishers gathered at Islamabad Zoo on Monday for a farewell party for Pakistan's lonely elephant Kavan, who is said to be airlifted to an elephant sanctuary in Cambodia on November 29 to begin a new life amongst a herd after years of campaigning by animal rights advocates and pop star Cher. Children pose for photos and musicians perform in front of the enclosure with Kavan, known to be a fan of music, at one point serenaded while he snacked on some grass. To mark the occasion, officials including lawmakers and Pakistan's climate change minister gathered among balloons and signs saying, Farewell Kavan, we will miss you. Our children used to visit it and they enjoyed its company. It was the life of the Islamabad Zoo, it was the life of Islamabad, and we we're all going to miss him so much, and we we're so sad that we didn't really fulfill our part of the responsibility to him, and we couldn't take care of him that well. Kavan will be airlifted to Cambodia after training for weeks with international specialists armed with treats such as bananas to get him used to the small enclosure and loud noises expected on a 10-hour flight. Around 24 Pakistani prisoners returned to their homes on Tuesday as they were released by India on completion of their sentence. The prisoners, including 20 fishermen who were arrested for entering Indian waters illegally, were repatriated through the Atari Waga international border. Due to the rocky relations between the two sides, prisoners who have completed their jail terms often languish in each other's jails for months, if not years, afterwards. Our senior had told us that in Gujarat, the road of Pakistan was approximately 20 years ago. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. इसके अलावा अमृतसर से तीन और एक लुधियाना जेल 24 परसेंट है जो आज रिलीज करके पाकिस्तान हैंडओवर किए जा रहे हैं। It has been a journey against many odds for an Indian couple who had a tough time convincing their families who had several apprehensions about their decision to get married. Defying the odds, the quadriplegic bridegroom took wedding vows on his wheelchair with his emotionally charged bride in northern Chandigarh city. Have a look. The story of Rahul Singh Divakar and Anamika, both 29, is inspiring and one of true love. It has been a journey against many odds for childhood sweethearts Rahul and his bride Anamika, who had a tough time convincing their families who had several apprehensions about their decision to get married. Rahul, a quadriplegic, has been admitted in the Chandigarh Spinal Rehab since September. The center was abuzz with activity on Monday as it hosted his wedding. Rahul took Feras, the vows, keeping the holy pyre as the witness on his wheelchair with Anamika. It is such a thing that you can never stop. If you are with your wife, if you are with your wife, then you can live a good life and do everything. If you have faith in your mind, then you can do a job that you can do a job that you can do a job that you can do a job. अगर डिसेबल है तो इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि सब कुछ खत्म हो गया। Anamika has also been putting up at the center ever since Rahul came here, and thanked Nikki Kaur, founder and CEO of Chandigarh Spinal Rehab, for the help. मेरे लिए यही काफी है कि Nikki मैम ने इस चीज को समझा है और समझने के बाद आज दो बच्चों को अपनाया। Rahul, who shared the journey, said even though the lower half of his body was completely paralyzed after a bike accident in 2016, it made no difference to Anamika's love for him. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन